I say that, okay, I'm here in LA, uh, I, I want to do it in English. So uh, that was the first time uh, after being about like, about like 40, uh, 25 years as an actor that I could write and direct a script. So I just, I just, I just wanted to do it in English. Yeah. I think that the environment invited me to do that. And did, did, did you write the story in English? Do you have it in mind? Everything was in English? Or, or did you have the story already and then you translated it? No, I, no, I started to write everything in English yeah, from, from page one. Yes. And Henry, tell us about uh, Kathmandu. I think people really enjoyed the movie. Uh, I don't think that the craziness, uh, very psychedelic movie. So can you tell us about the movie, your involvement? Um, so I was the cinematographer and also the writer on the film. Um, and uh, I was actually traveling and my friend called me and said, hey, we got a movie that we want to shoot in Nepal. Are you, are you down? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Um, and came over, we, we kind of had a slight idea of what we were going to do. Then we got over there and realized it wasn't quite feasible. So we kind of scrapped it. And we were over there for a full month, so we kind of experienced for two weeks and let our experiences kind of inform what was going to happen throughout the uh, through the script. We didn't trip out or anything, but um, <laughs> we we both got sick over there. I, they gave me three uh, diagnoses. It was either tuberculosis, uh, uh, I can't remember the other one, or lymphoma, which is incurable. And I was like sitting there. <laughs> thinking what my make-a-wish would be. <laughs> uh, I ended up being fine, but it kind of let us inform what, what the whole rest of the movie was going to be about. So, uh, yeah, we wrote it over there, spent, spent about a month over there shooting. It was super, super fun and easy to shoot over there. It was kind of like we said, hey, we got a camera. Let's shoot something, and people were all excited. So it was really, really pretty cool, pretty cool experience, yeah. Did you need to ask? Any permission from the city to shoot, or you would just it would, be filming? Yeah, it was pretty much we, we showed up. I think for one of the club scenes, we had to pay like 300 bucks or something for for the location, but everything else was pretty much free. That rock club with like Jimi Hendrix in the background, it was pretty crazy. We went in there and we we're like, hey, we, we want to shoot something here. You think we you would let us do that? He was like, yeah, come back in two weeks. We're doing a little renovation. Uh, come back and see us. and We'll let you know. We got there uh, like two days before the two-week deadline, and the roof was off the place. They were like, we thought they were doing a couple renovations, but they were completely redoing the whole thing. And we we're like, do you think you guys are going to be ready in two days? And they were like, oh yeah, come back. And it was completely revitalized, new stage lights and everything that you saw. It was insane, and uh, it just wasn't what you were expecting in Nepal, like this crazy epic rock club. But it was. Everyone there was super accepting and welcoming to us. It was, yeah, it's really cool. So, any other questions? The, the, reason, the reason I ask that is because in, in, in LA, I don't know if in the whole country, in Florida, or you know, the whole states, but you have to ask the city uh, for permission anywhere you want to shoot. In, even, even if you want to shoot inside your room, in, yeah. at your own house, yeah. you have to ask for permission and I think some of the permissions will cost and between $500 or $700 just to shoot anywhere. Yeah. We were pretty lucky. We were pretty lucky because we had a super small crew so we were, it was like only five of us over there. So we were able to kind of get in and get out pretty quickly. So but I mean there were, there were crazy stories with each one of those scenes like the scene where we were walking down the street, one of the, we got like a rickshaw, because I was hanging off the back of the rickshaw with the camera, shooting that walk and talk, uh, down the, walking down the street. And the first rickshaw guy we got was hammered out of his mind. And we were like, we let him take us down the street once, and we are like, sorry, we're going to go with someone else. He was like, no, I do a good job, I do a good job. He was like, no, sorry, we're going to go with someone else, please go on your way. And before he knew it, he was pulling his wiener out and trying to pee on us and like <laughs> pop the pop the tires on his rickshaw and just laid it in front of the group and in the middle of the street and was like you're not filming here we're like oh my god yeah it was, it was pretty out of control but, and each scene had like a crazy story with that so there's tons of tons of stories but 
Kristen, can you tell us a little bit about the two actors, the main two actors in, in your short film? They were, I, I think it was a, 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 a great choice, uh, but they, they kind of look familiar, but I, I, I don't know if they are or not, but um, um, like, the, like the bad guy was so like, you know, like really bad and played off of like the sick guy. And then when we find out it's like, you know, kind of role reversal, not necessarily, but, <laughs> but the tables weren't like what we saw before. So can you tell us about how you cast them? Do we know them? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, w one of them is very familiar, actually, to me, because uh, one is my son, actually. The young one, he's my son. <laughs> and uh, I wrote the film for him, and because he's an actor and he's been living in LA for uh, about four years now. And about the other guy, that's a funny story, because uh, I, w when I ended up uh, finishing the script, I uploaded to uh, this uh, LA casting website where you uh, submit your project and you start requesting actors for casting and everything. And I and I had about uh, about 400 submissions for the the role of the the old guy for the bad guy in one day. So I had to I had to uh, choose uh, between these uh, among people um, certain actors that I that I would cast. So I did auditions and I and I, I and I chose about. Um, about 10 of them uh, based on the reel. And there was this guy who only had a picture. He, that, he didn't have anything else, just a picture that looks exactly <laughs> like him. And I said, okay, this is the guy that I want that, that, that I wanted the mo uh, in my movie, but I don't know if he can act or not. So I, I sent the script to this uh, 10 people and, and prepare an audition about uh, like uh, three days after that, and um, and he answered my email and he said, "Hey, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna audition for the part, but I'm in Mexico. So um, can I take myself and send it over to you?" And I said, "Sure." Uh, and uh, it took a couple of days for him to do that. And while I was uh, actually casting these other actors, I I I wasn't that happy. With the with the people I cast in LA, so I when I received the 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 tape of this guy, he was literally doing the same thing, looking at the camera, as he did in the, in, in the movie, and um, so uh, and he improvised a lot, and and then I said, okay, you have the job, but you're in Mexico. And I said, I'm gonna float, I'm gonna fly over to, to uh, what are you shooting? I'm, I'm shooting in three days. Okay, I'm flying over to LA to do this. I wanna, I wanna do the story. So he came to LA and he did it. And when I met him, I asked him, cause he has kind of like a familiar face, as you say. I mean, some, some people say he looks like Willem Dafoe or yeah. someone who looks like Willem Dafoe. And everybody says, I, I think I, I've seen this guy in a movie. And he told me his story. He's 64 years old. He's never acted before. Um, he has uh, three daughters that they're in their 20s, and they are actresses in LA. And 10 years ago, he uh, when when he, he was taking the young one to the acting classes, he said, uh, oh, "Oh, these might be fun, so I think I'm going to do it just for me." And he started to take uh, improv sessions, uh, just or an intro group in a class. And he's been doing that for about 10 years. And he told me that um, uh, lately, uh, last year, his teacher uh, told him that if you don't start auditioning for real movies, I'm gonna start teaching you, I'm gonna stop teaching you. So, uh, so this is, I think, the second thing that he's ever done in his life. Uh, and since then, he, he I met him I met him at my son's graduation about two two months ago, and uh, he's never stopped working since then. So I think he's doing pretty well, and and I think he's a natural actor. He's a uh, he's a method actor. Actually, if you see the movie again, uh, he's gonna from 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 the very first shot, he has a scar. He has a a, a, a fresh uh, cut because. Uh, in the rehearsals, he started to really fight the cops, and he had a he had a like a like a how do you say it? Un cabezazo. Headbutt. Like a headbutt, <laughs> and he cut he cut 
his uh, forehead before the shooting. So the guy was bleeding on the rehearsals, like uh, half an hour before we had to really shoot the movie. So we, we did all we, we could to you know, put some makeup and, 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 and you, don't, you don't get to notice that. But the, the guy, he's really, he's really natural and I'm glad um, he, he, he did well. I think they, they, they both, they do really chemistry on, on screen and, um, and that was it. And the other one, I know, as I told you, is my son. Thank you. And we have a question right there. Oh, me Mexican? Yeah. Uh, oh, no, he's not Mexican. His mother is from Mexico, was from Mexico. The guy, he's from San Diego. Mm -hmm. And I think his father married a Mexican, uh, or I don't know if his father was Mexican too, because the guy is named Joe Lopez. Did you make him look older? <laughs> no, he's just like that. He looks just like that. I think, yes, when he, when, he, he, when I saw, I think, when I saw him on the picture, he looked better on the picture than, than in real life. And when I saw him in, in, in person, I said, okay, we're not even uh, putting makeup on you. I mean, I really, I really <laughs> like the way you look. Yeah. Yes. What you see is what you get. It, it, he has more wrinkles in his, uh, in his, uh, in his face than, than, than an elephant. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and the guy, I, I don't know if it's because of that, but the guy's been a surfer for about 40 years. And he, the guy, he's been surfing all over the world until he just settled down. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, I'm going to pretend to be an audience. So. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the budget? Because normally people don't realize how much sometimes this um, creating and producing a short film costs. Um, just talk about general budget and how much something like this. Okay, let's start with Henry. Uh, I was I was pretty hands off on the budget. Uh, the producer, yeah, she she was just working on like uh, getting her visa, and it was like her last trip that she could take before she could get her visa, and uh, it was completely funded by her. So it was kind of like, sure, you can do it. <laughs> I'm there. So I wish I could tell you more, but I, I really, uh, I, I know how much my plane ticket costs, and that's about it. <laughs> oh man, oh mine. Uh, it was supposed to be uh, paid by a school, but uh, I ended up uh, uh, hiring a bigger crew and flying over. I mean, the actor and uh, getting a restaurant and everything and um, it is about uh, 20 yeah a little less than 30 but it's between yeah sometimes can be very expensive anybody else yeah this is I think the most glamorous uh, way to waste uh, your money yeah <laughs> yeah so they can call you at the end of the director yeah Do I see a question? So it's for, for, for Christian? Christian. So did you like it? Did you like directing? Are you thinking on doing it uh, again in any time soon? Any real, like, 45 minute or an hour movie? Oh, yes, definitely, yeah. Uh, after this, I started uh, thinking about uh, more stories. Um, I took this year off as an actor uh, because, because of this movie, I've, I've been having fun uh, submitting this uh, to a, a lot of festivals around the world and I've been traveling with it. It's been really fun. But I think next year I'm, I'm going back to acting. Actually, one of my agents is here, so you have to get me a job soon. <laughs> and, um, but I have, I have three stories that I wanted to uh, develop uh, as a writer and uh, eventually direct them. They're gonna be feature films, yes. What was the inspiration for the movie? What was the, where the thing came from? For both of you. Oh. Um, my, you, you wanna ask, uh, answer? Okay. 
Um, the first, the first thing that I was uh, thinking was about um, the premise of the movie is, uh, what if you just find out that you, you're about to die, that you have this terminal disease and you're dying in less than thirty days, and you have uh, absolutely nothing with you on you, and uh, and and actually uh, nothing to lose. So, uh, what would you do if you're in that position? And um, and after that, when I when I started to think about the idea, I don't know why I remembered uh, a song, um, a line from a, from a Bruce Springsteen song about like three five years ago, where he, in, in Atlantic City where he where he ended up saying, um, "Last night I met this guy. I'm gonna do a little fable for him." So uh, I put those things together, and that's how I started to write the movie. Uh, yeah, like I said um, before, it was it was kind of we had t we were toying with the idea of why this guy was running away, and then me and the director both got sick and we're like, okay, this is actually something that happens. People get sick and they they run away from their diagnosis. Uh, and other things that were kind of inspired, the, like the glowing head figure that was leading him through the city. Uh, I had actually I my flight I had an. 11 hour layover in Hong Kong and the Hong Kong airport is like huge there's like art galleries and like uh, <laughs> homages to Bruce Lee and stuff all throughout the airport and I was walking through and I saw this picture of this uh, like samurai in full garb and he had a glowing head and it wasn't until we started talking about like the psychedelic sequences that I thought about that picture and again I was like this this is kind of a really cool figure to be kind of guiding him into his realization of what he's doing wrong by running away from his problems. So, yeah. And then we just let different, there were, there were things that didn't make the cut as well, but it was kind of just all of our experiences while we were over there, like going to the dancing club and the rock club and all that, that we let it just kind of weave its way into the story. Can you also tell us a little bit about the, the main actors? And Kathmandu, are there, are there your friends? Like they flew over there. It's it. How did that work? How did you cast? Uh, yeah. So the the main actor, uh, the lead, uh, acted in Jacob, the director's senior film, and he's just he's one of the greatest actors that we've ever worked with. He's just really he can tap into his emotion really well, and uh, and he was just kind of. He became our friend through through that set, and we we're like, we need to bring him over because he just he's down for anything, and he's like, kind of he's kind of a hippie type of dude to begin with. So we we're like, he'd he'd be perfect for the role. And then uh, the other the other guy, his his friend Gorov, went to school with us. He actually came on as, as a producer, and we tried casting some other locals, but they just weren't quite, they didn't quite have the chops. And he he was with us the whole time, and we we're like, let's just cast Gorov in it. And, he ended up doing a pretty good job. We were worried at first because <laughs> he 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 isn't an actor, but uh, we ended up pulling some some good performances out of him. But yeah, he came on as a producer, and then we're like, "You want to act?" He was like, "I guess so." <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Um, probably from the beginning to an end, writing and producing and shooting, editing. How long for both of you? Something like this will take it take you. Uh, it took me about uh, two to uh, three weeks. Yes, we. Uh, I. I. I don't know why I. I wrote it very fast. I think I. I, I wrote it in, in two weeks, and then the problem was that I had to. I rented the restaurant, the diner. I. I, I saw the diner and I fell in love with it. And they. They. They shoot a lot of uh, Hollywood movies in there, and, and I said I want. I want that diner. So I rented at, uh, I rented the diner, and they would give it to me for just twelve hours. So we tried our best to shoot uh, fast as we can. We ended up uh, shooting the film in ten hours, wow. and three days after that, it was edited. So uh, yeah, I think it was really quick for us. Mm -hmm. fast, yes. yes, and actually the the movie the composer the composer who each other. Uh, the guy, he's a guy from Russia. He lives in LA. He he makes music for uh, a lot of series in Hollywood, uh, included uh, Gotham and I don't know which else. The guy was at the he was on location, looking over 
watching while we were shooting the film. So uh, he went home with an idea and three days after he just showed up with the whole music and uh, his music uh, has won about two or three awards in, in different countries for, for, this, uh, for this film. Yes. Yeah, so from inception, uh, it was probably like two weeks of like, hey, we're gonna go. Then we were over in Nepal for a whole month, shot for maybe like a week of that. The rest was kind of like location scouting and figuring out what we we're gonna do uh, and writing. Uh, but yeah, so we were in Nepal for a month, and this was two years ago. He just, he, Jacob edited it as well, the director, and he takes a while to edit, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, I like to edit my stuff in a weekend like you. It takes three days usually for me, because I just, it's all I do. But uh, yeah, he, he plays around with it a lot. And then there was the visual effects and stuff too, which he did all himself, so it, it took quite a bit of time in the post process, but yeah. Any other questions? Right there. Okay, so she asked, she's asking if um, the actors uh, in Christian's film prepared with any, any particular acting method or if they had any tool, because uh, she says, she thinks that uh, for the amount of time that he explained that they shot, like they must have been very prepared. Uh, yes, thanks. Uh, yes, for about a week before we shoot the movie, I made my son, uh, come to my house in LA uh, to to do the the whole film over and over again every night for about a week so I pretended to be the the bad guy and uh, so we we rehearsed a lot and um, so I knew the guy w was gonna be fine because uh, not my son but the old guy because of what I saw on the tape but um, but with my son, we rehearsed a lot and about intentions, about uh, we tried to improvise um, enough like uh, things in the movie. And before, because the guy was, he, the guy was coming from Mexico the same day we were shooting. He, he came in the morning and we were shooting at 5 p.m. So um, they didn't have time to rehearse, but on set, so, um, yeah, I prepared my son for about a week, and then when they when they met finally on set, I gave them about two hours to you know to do the lines and to feel comfortable. And when they say they were ready, I I turn on the cameras. He had a good professor from uh, from you, uh, Christian. Of course, he's. Um, part of the of Peruvian, but also Latin American uh, history of films. He's uh, in, in very famous uh, movies like uh, La Mujer de Mi Hermano y uh, No Se Lo Digas a Nadie, which are amazing films. I'm really happy that you're here with us, sharing your movie. Also, uh, we have Henry here. Thank you so much for coming. That's it. <laughs> and please, round of applause for them.